Churches in America are under attack. Satan has a master plan to destroy God's church, and he is accomplishing it with stunning effectiveness as he uses the United States IRS to accomplish his sinister plot. Recently, I met Dr. Greg Dixon, one of the heroes of my college years. He shared his new book, The Trail of Blood Revisited with me. And while we were having our discussion, I offered to help him make this video. No doubt you will remember the book, The Trail of Blood by Dr. Carroll, which outlines the history of the Independent Baptist Church from the times of Christ through the persecutions mentioned in Fox's Book of Martyrs and moving into the more modern era. You will also remember that the chart that showed the line of purity of Independent Baptists down through history, and interestingly enough, is the same chart and the same churches that are listed in Dr. Carroll's work as those who preserve the Word of God in various parts of the world, even dying for their efforts. But it resulted in our present-day King James Version of the Bible. Dr. Dixon's book, The Trail of Blood Revisited, reviews some of this history and then adds the modern-day attack on the same independent Baptist-based church movement. The purpose of this video is to show just what is happening in our modern era of so-called freedom of religion in America and to outline the means being employed by Satan with the help of government agencies like the IRS to accomplish his plan. Please listen carefully as Dr. Greg Dixon, former pastor of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple, gives a very detailed and clear presentation of this modern day attack. Dr. Dixon, please tell us about Satan's plan to destroy God's church. The trap and sin of tax exemption. Just as Israel was God's instrument for the production, preservation, and propagation of the truth in the Old Testament, God has chosen His divine church, assembly, to be the instrument for the same purpose in the New Testament. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles, utterances of God. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, 1 Timothy 3.15. Why does Satan want to destroy the Lord's assembly? And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Dr. Dixon is going to explain how Satan is accomplishing his plan to destroy God's church in this day and time before the second coming of Jesus Christ. He will talk about four ways that he is accomplishing this plan. First, by destroying the definition of the church, then by confusing what the Bible defines as the church, thirdly, by enticing New Testament churches to trade their rights for privileges or benefits, and trading the headship of Christ for the lordship of government, and lastly, by muzzling God's preachers. We will then see how we live in a post-Christian era which brings attacks by big government against the Lord's church. Ultimately, we will see that the results of resisting state tyranny are ridicule, being labeled anti-government and unpatriotic, and confiscation of church assets. I am a pastor, having attended Baptist Bible College, Tennessee Temple College, and Hiles Anderson College. 
The statement of faith and definition of the church that Dr. Dixon will cite is the same definition that is used by all the major Bible colleges today, BBC, Temple, Hiles Anderson, and many others. God has made the church, not the Billy Graham Association, not Moody Bible Institute, not Liberty Baptist College, not even Hiles Anderson College, as the sole propagator of the gospel. And the devil is trying to redefine the definition of the church. How is Satan accomplishing this plan? By destroying the biblical definition of the New Testament church. The King James Bible 1611 is the only rule of faith and practice for the New Testament church. The Lord Jesus said, All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He is the head and the only head of the New Testament church and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church." Ephesians 1.22. The New Testament church, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. The New Testament church defined, this is the Articles of Faith of the Baptist Bible Fellowship International. We believe that a Baptist church is a congregation of baptized believers associated by a covenant of faith and fellowship of the gospel, and church being understood to be the citadel and propagator of the divine and eternal grace, observing the ordinances of Christ, governed by his laws, exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word and its officers of ordination or pastors or elders whose qualifications, claims, and duties are clearly defined in the scriptures. We believe the true mission of the church is found in the Great Commission. First, to make disciples. Second, to build up the saints in the most holy faith. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, Ephesians 2.20. According to Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, in the most general sense, the religious society of Jesus Christ to receive, preserve, and propagate his doctrine, that is the doctrine of Christ, and ordinances. The New Testament church, according to the book of Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20, is a visible church, for the 11 disciples were visible. It's a local church. They went to a mountain where Jesus had appointed them a place. Verse 16, it's the only institution that was founded for the purpose of worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 17, it's the only institution that's under the direct authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, it's the only institution authorized for world evangelism. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, verse 19. It's the only institution authorized to administer baptism, immersion, verse 19. And it's the only institution authorized to teach the whole counsel of God, verse 20. Now, there are only three positions, only three possible positions that you can take on the doctrine of the church. The Catholic position, which is the universal, visible church. The Protestant position, which is the universal, invisible church. Or the biblical or Baptist position, which is the local, visible church or assembly. Now, notice what the New Testament church or assembly is not. First, it is not a legal entity or organization such as a nonprofit corporation, an unincorporated association, corporation soul, which is the Catholic model, nor a charitable trust, not even an independent Baptist church. Now, this is very important that you understand this. In U.S. versus IBT, Gregory A. Dixon, trustee, Judge Sarah Evans Barker erred by deliberately misrepresenting the status of IBT by saying, 
IBT is an independent Baptist church defining itself as a New Testament church. At no time did IBT present itself before the court as an independent Baptist church. IBT declared itself at all times as a New Testament church. Now, this is very, very important. So-called independent Baptist churches are not independent if they are organized as public charities under Section 501c3 of the IRC, the IRS Code. They are no different than those churches affiliated with conventions or denominations. Even if they're in a fellowship of churches or an association, all are dependent on government for their existence and sustenance through tax exemption and tax-deductible gifts. But Barker had a problem with IBT. She had no case law to back up her statement. Therefore, she said, this view is consistent with the Third Circuit's decision in Bethel Baptist Church versus U.S., Third Circuit, 1987. In that several independent Baptist churches have lost religious liberty rulings, the courts have established that they are not protected by the Constitution. Thankfully, the courts have not ruled on a New Testament church. Therefore, a church with a proper status may still have an opportunity to prevail in the courts. The devil's church is a state-approved and recognized church and has always been, which is a legal entity. Tax Guide for Churches and Religious Organizations Internal Revenue Service Tax-Exempt and Government Entities Department of the Treasury Publication 1828 Catalog Number 121096G IRS State Church Defined Publication 1828 Page 1 Churches and religious organizations may be legally organized under state law, including as unincorporated associations, nonprofit corporations, corporation soul, and charitable trusts. IRC Section 501c3 describes charitable organizations, including churches and religious organizations, which qualify for exemption from federal income tax and generally are eligible to receive tax-deductible contributions. Church. Certain characteristics are generally attributed to churches. These attributes of a church have been developed by the IRS and by court decisions. They include distinct legal existences. Now, Listen to what the Christian Law Association says. They agree with the IRS. From my briefcase, Attorney David C. Gibbs, Jr., April 1998, will churches remain tax-exempt in America? Internal Revenue Code, Section 501c3, provides for the tax exemption of certain organizations, including churches and schools, if, if they meet seven criteria. These criteria are easy for the church to meet if... The church knows and understands them. The organization must be a formal organization. This means the church must be organized as a trust and an unincorporated association or a corporation. Pastor, I hope that you are enjoying the clear presentation by Dr. Greg Dixon of the definition of the church. The Bible wisely says that the borrower is servant to the lender. An old Chinese Christian who spent many years in concentration camps in Siberia, Watchman Nee, when writing about spiritual authority said, when you have to defend yourself, you make the other person your judge and place yourself on the witness stand. According to the Bible, Christians should judge the world, not the other way around. Don't be put in a position of needing to defend yourself. By the way, when the Bible talks about the gates of hell not being able to prevail, it means that we are on the attack of the gates of hell, not on the defense. Gates don't attack. Christian soldiers do. 
any of the state-approved entities that were mentioned will put you on the witness stand every time, and they base their definition of morality on the will of the state. That is not how morality is defined. If the will of the state can define morality, then today they can will that we have the right to worship God according to the principles of the Bible, but tomorrow they could will that if we obey the word of God, we are breaking the law. As we continue, Dr. Dixon shows how that the IRS considers their IRS Bible a living document. That really means it is dead because they need to keep changing it over and over to make it seem alive. Here Dr. Dixon explain how even the biblical definition of the church is confused. Now, how is Satan accomplishing this plan? First, by confusing the biblical definition of the New Testament church. Now, this is the second way. By confusing, by confusing. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints, 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Now, I want you to notice, voluntary but mandatory. Voluntary, but mandatory. The legal status for a church is voluntary, according to IRS Publication 1828. IRS Publication 1828, page 1. Churches and religious organizations may be legally organized under state law, including as Uncorporated associations, nonprofit corporations, corporation soul, and charitable trusts. Now, notice the word may. IRS Publication 1828, page 3. Applying for tax exempt status. Employer identification number EIN. Every tax exempt organization, including a church, should have an EIN whether or not the organization has any employees. An organization that does not have an EIN should file Form SS4, Application for Employer Identification Number, in accordance with the instructions. Emphasis added. IRS Publication 1828, page 2. Recognition of tax-exempt status. Automatic exemption for churches. Churches that meet the requirements of IRC, Section 501c3, are automatically considered exempt and are not required to apply for and obtain recognition for tax-exempt status from the IRS. Although there is no requirement to do so, many churches seek recognition of exempt status from the IRS. Now, notice IRC Section 508, Special Rules with Respect to Section 501c3 organizations. Now, notice exceptions. Number one, mandatory exceptions. Churches shall not apply for tax exemption. Observation. This simply says that a church of any denomination, including mystical religions and cults, has a mandatory exception from applying for 501c3 status. They do not have to file Form 1023 or an annual Form 990 as other religious organizations. Again, voluntary, but IRS entices churches into this legal status by offering benefits and privileges. IRS Publication 1828, page 1. This publication explains the benefits and the responsibilities under the federal tax system for churches and religious organizations. Note, the IRS makes no distinction between churches and religious or parachurch organizations. Benefits include recognition by the state and provisions tax exemption from the state, including ownership of property. Now contrast that with the early church. 
because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles or unbelievers. We therefore ought to receive such, that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. 3 John 7 and 8. Iris Publication, 1828, page 2. Recognition of tax-exempt status. Automatic exemption for churches. Although there is no requirement to do so, many churches seek recognition of exempt status from the IRS because such recognition assures church leaders, members, and contributors that the church is recognized as exempt and qualifies for related tax benefits. For example, contributors to a church that has been recognized as tax-exempt would know that their contributions are tax-deductible. Voluntary but mandatory compliance is required for benefits and privileges. IRS Publication 1828, Introduction. Quote, Congress has enacted special tax laws applicable to churches, religious organizations, and ministers in recognition of their unique status in American society and of their rights guaranteed by the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, close quote. The federal tax laws for churches is a clear violation of the Holy Scriptures. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, Colossians 1.18. These laws also run contrary to the historic Baptist position on Christ and his church. Isaac Bacchus led the battle against incorporation of churches in 1773. Isaac Bacchus and the American Pietistic Tradition by William G. McLaughlin. These laws are also contrary to the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, etc. Churches that become legal entities waive their rights guaranteed by the First Amendment and the state constitutions. Consider what the Supreme Court of the United States says about corporations or legal entities in Hale v. Hinkle, 1905. The benefits of the Fifth Amendment are exclusively for a witness compelled to testify against himself in a criminal case, and he cannot set them up on behalf of a corporation. A corporation is a creature of the state, and there is a reserved right in the legislature to investigate its contract and to find out whether it has exceeded its power, quote, um, Close quote. Here's another quote. There is a clear distinction between an individual and a corporation, and the latter being a creature of the state has no constitutional right to refuse to submit its books and papers for examination at the suit of the state. Close quote. James Madison concerning the church and incorporation. James Madison is called the father of the Constitution. Quote, he was also co-drafter of the Bill of Rights. As our fourth U.S. president, he served two terms, 1809 to 1817. He was a tireless supporter of religious liberty. After becoming president, Madison vetoed a bill which would have granted public land to a Baptist church in Mississippi. On February the 21st, 1811, President James Madison wrote to the House of Representatives the following words, Having examined and considered the bill entitled An Act Incorporating the Protestant Episcopal Church 
in the town of Alexandria, in the District of Columbia, I now return the bill to the House of Representatives, close quote. Listen to this from Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856 edition. Exemption, a privilege which dispenses with the general rule. For example, in Pennsylvania and perhaps in all the other states, clergymen are exempt from serving on juries. Exemptions are generally allowed not for the benefit of the individual, but for some public advantage. Now, I want you to see this cartoon. Now, I'll admit that the bride looks like she needs to go on a little diet, but I think you'll get the point. The Bible says that the church is the bride of Christ. Now, on the left, you notice that the bride, and you notice that she's very chaste in her dress, which is a little unusual for these days. You see that she has an umbrella, and written across the umbrella is, uh, says the Holy Bible. And underneath it is the First Amendment, because our First Amendment is based upon the Holy Scriptures. And the rain is coming down, and she's protected by the Holy Bible and the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. And then over here on the second part, it's uh, you got the same bride, but she stepped out from under the Holy Bible and the First Amendment, under corporate law, under the 501c3 tax-exempt, not-for-profit scheme to receive benefits and privileges from the IRS. And she's not protected any longer. But down comes the rain. And look at the old devil down below enticing her to come out from under the umbrella of protection, enticing her to come from the protection of her protector, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has promised. He said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world, even to the end of the age. But my friends, if the church steps out from his protection— and asks the government for protection, then how can the Lord Jesus Christ protect her? But listen to what Attorney Zachary Gray of the Christian Law Association said in our battle with the Internal Revenue Service in Indianapolis when the IRS attacked the Indianapolis Baptist Temple. He said, Brother Dixon is biblically right but legally wrong. He said that on a Mississippi radio program, January 2001. Now, let me ask you a question. Would you rather be biblically right or legally right? Take your choice. In Texas versus Roloff, 1984, the court said, quote, the issue is not whether People's Baptist is performing a service, that falls beneath licensing standards. The three homes have a record of high-quality service. People's Baptist from this record could no doubt easily satisfy licensing requirements, but has chosen not to do so. It reasons that licensing interferes with religious freedom. People's Baptist does not, however, resist all licensing. To do business in Texas, in fact, it does its business and service as a corporation under the corporate name of Corpus Christi People's Baptist Church, Inc., and it complies with all business licensing requirements. In Roloff, the court rejected the argument that the Licensing Act impinged on the corporation's free exercise of religion. Well, pastor, church officer, or church member, do you hear anything that sounds disturbing? Do you ever get suspicious of someone that is offering you something free or doing something for you that is completely free? 
Have you ever heard the phrase, if it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is? Have you ever heard or seen a story about someone that enters a family-owned store and offers protection from neighborhood crime? I can guarantee you that it always costs the store owner a percentage. It brings to mind a verse in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18, which says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. You might begin to ask yourself, what kind of price pastors and churches will pay for becoming partners with the IRS and the federal government for, quote, quote, benefits that can only be granted by God. Don't let Satan entice you to trade rights given by God for privileges or benefits, or the headship of Christ for the lordship of government. Now, how is Satan accomplishing this plan? by enticing New Testament churches to trade rights for privileges, benefits for the headship of Christ, for the lordship of government. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, 2 Samuel Samuel 24, verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel, 1 Chronicles 21, verse 1. God says, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I, pre- that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 and 3. Oh, my friend, Satan's trick the hoax of tax exemption. An Irish state church is tax exempt, a privilege granted by the state. The Lord's church is non-taxable, a right granted by God. What a difference. Irish publication 1828, page 2, churches that meet the requirements of IRSC section 501c3 are automatically considered exempt and are not required to apply for and obtain recognition of tax-exempt status from the IRS. However, even though churches are generally eligible to receive tax-deductible contributions to qualify for tax exemption, such organizations must meet the following requirements. IRS Publication 1828, page 2, the organization must be organized and operated exclusively for religious, educational, scientific, or other charitable purposes. My friends, this is a total contradiction as to the definition and purpose of the Lord's Church. This is a description of a social club whose purpose is to foster the social gospel. Notice net earnings may not inure to the benefit of any private individual or shareholder. This statement puts the finances of a church under the control of the IRS. Iris Publication 1828, page 2, no substantial part of its activity may be attempting to influence legislation, but there are no guidelines for the word substantial. The organization may not intervene in political campaigns, and no part of the organization's purpose or activities may be illegal or violate fundamental public policy. Listen, listen, Christ is no longer head of this church. A fable for the times. This is from The Sword and the Trowel, September 1888. 
Spurgeon's Magazine. A certain man had long accustomed himself to eat out of the same trough with a beast, and being rebuked for such unclean feeding, he replied that he did not object to it, and that by long established custom his fathers had so fed before him for many generations. As there was no other way of curing him of this of his degrading habit, his friends began to remove the trough, whereas he struggled and raved like a madman, calling them robbers and villains and many other bad names. Meanwhile, the beast at the other end of the trough patiently submitted to lose its provender. Fact, state support of religion by tithes and other forced payments is the trough. The Irish church feeds out of the same trough with the church, which it is wont to call the Romish beast, only it stands at the fullest end of it. American churches today, including Baptists, who receive benefits by tax exemption, tax deductible gifts, and faith-based initiative grants, are no different than the Church of England receiving grants from Great Britain. Many people do not know the story of how the Indianapolis Baptist Temple was seized by the IRS. Here is what happened. Because of their sincerely held belief that the Lord Jesus Christ is the head over the church, after they stopped operating as a state-recognized tax-exempt church in 1983, they no longer withheld taxes on those who served in the ministry of the church. When the new Social Security law was passed by Congress in 1984, they also refused to file the exemption forms. The IRS and the court both admitted that the church owed no taxes and that those serving the church had paid their own taxes, but because the church had not collected them, nor filed the exemption form, they were still liable. This was not a tax case, but one of the most important religious liberty cases in the history of our nation. The remaining part of this video will outline the IRS position, the court case, legal statements, and even the news articles outlining what the church did, as any church would do to stand up for righteousness and truth according to the Word of God. Following information came from the files of the IRS on IBT. IRS Regional Commissioner, August the 19th, 1994. Quote, because a reasonable belief exists that you may not be tax exempt or that you may be liable for tax, I have authorized a church tax inquiry, close quote. November 8, 1994, quote, If we determine that you are not exempt, the service will notify the appropriate state officials in accordance with Section 6104C of the Code that you are not an organization described in Section 501C3. The service will consider your organization to be a taxable entity, quote, On August 19, 1994, we sent you a notice of church tax inquiry within the meaning of Section 7611A of the IRC to notify you of concerns we have about your tax liability and exempt status, close quote. The Indianapolis Star, July 8, 1995, Southside Church loses state tax-exempt status. Baptist Temple lost federal status as well. Why did the Indianapolis Baptist Temple lose its tax exemption in 1995, even though they had relinquished it in 1986. Articles about the Indianapolis Baptist Temple in the Indianapolis Star since 1971 found in secret IRS files obtained via discovery, detailing alleged political and legislative activity. My friends, the IRS have been keeping a file on this preacher since clear back in 1971. These are the headlines of articles, and this is just a few, just a few of the articles that came out of that file. These were articles that were in the Indianapolis Star and the News, Baptist High School to Stress Bible, Reverend Dixon Fights Daycare License, Church Plans Tech School. Pornography, the target of a downtown rally attended by a thousand. 
a preacher against pornography? What's this world coming to? Reverend Dixon opposes the lottery bill, churches to fight government encroachment. State tax laws may collide with the church. Group to obey Jesus, not government. Dixon opposes Governor Orr on schools. Gays urge panel to include them in anti-bias bill. It was opposed by Reverend Greg Dixon. Here are questions that the Indianapolis Baptist Temple refused to answer. These dates covered from January 1, 1991 to May 31, 1994. This was a letter that we received from the IRS. This is just a partial list. Provide detailed descriptions of your current activities. Have there been any changes during this period? Provide copies of all of your organizing and operational documents. List your sources of income, donations and gifts in excess of $100. List your current governing board members and officers. How are they elected? You see, my friends, they want the preacher to be a, a snitch. They want the preacher to, uh, to be... Uh, to, to, uh, uh, to, to tell on, their, on, on, on his members. List your current governing board members and officers. How are they elected? List your staff. Do you pay your staff in cash? Do you pay for any supplies or similar expenses in cash? Why do you do it if you do? Did you make grants, gifts, or loans in excess of $100? You know what that means? That means that if you if you gave anything to poor people, they want you to tell did you use independent contractors? That means did you give to missionaries? You're supposed to turn it in. Describe your fundraising activities and submit representative copies of literature you have distributed soliciting contributions. Describe any federal, state, and or local laws or public policies with which we, you advocate noncompliance. What about abortion? What about uh, are you against sodomy? My friends, listen, that means federal public policy. Describe any incidents in which your officers or members were arrested for noncompliance with any laws with which you advocated noncompliance. Did you intervene in any political campaign on behalf of or against any candidates for public office? Do you operate your school under a racially non-discriminatory policy as required by revenue procedure? 75 to 50. Do you file Form 5578 Annual Certif Certification of Racial Non-Discrimination for a Private School Exempt from Federal Income Tax? Now, my friends, the trap closes. U.S. versus Indianapolis Baptist Temple, a summary. The government conceded. Judge Barker agreed. The Lordship of Jesus Christ is a major doctrine of IBT. Judge Barker declares and is sustained by the Seventh Circuit that Jesus Christ cannot be the sole and exclusive head of his church, therefore outlawing the New Testament church in the U.S. by establishing a state church totally controlled by the IRS. The courts in this case have declared that government is God in the U.S., even over Christ's own blood-bought church. Judge Barker, upheld by, uh, upheld by the Seventh Circuit, admitted that the IRS never assessed taxes to IBT and admitted the IRS erred, but that it makes no difference. Judge Barker, the Seventh and Supreme Court, all, uh, by uh, refusing to hear the case, all have legalized the Babalus, Inc. and Hialeah, Florida's right to sacrifice chickens but outlawed the New Testament church by declaring that a church may believe in the lordship of Christ over his church, but cannot practice their belief in the headship of Christ over his church. The Seventh Circuit ruled it does not matter what sort of entity IBT is. Whatever entity it is, it must comply with the federal employment tax laws. In this ruling, the courts have outlawed Baptists and other nonconformists and legalized the state IRS-controlled church.
In January 2001, an elderly Baptist pastor gave the following reason for not standing with the Indianapolis Baptist Temple in their historic struggle with the IRS. We believe that tax exemption is a privilege, not a right. Tragically, this is true for tax-exempt public charities, but not for New Testament churches. They are not tax-exempt, but non-taxable. In U.S. Bo in U.S. versus Bob Jones University, Section 3038, quote, in an area as complex as the tax system, the agency, Congress vests with administrative responsibility, must be able to exercise its authority to meet changing conditions and new problems, close quote. U.S. versus Bob Jones University, one of the most cited tax cases, section 4046, quote, Congress, in enacting those provisions of the IRC pertaining to the tax-exempt status of religious, charitable, or education corporations and the deductibility of charitable contributions to such corporations sought to provide tax benefits to charitable organizations to encourage the development of private institutions that serve a useful public purpose or supplement or take the place of public institutions of the same kind. Close quote. Iris Publication, 1828. The State Church Bible, subject to change. Quote, the IRS considers this publication a living document, one that will be revised to take into account future developments and feedback. But our Bible does not change. It is a sobering thought that the IRS has teamed with the Catholic Church and even with some well-known fundamentalist lawyers whose job it is to defend churches from the oppression of government. The following outlines just how the abuser is teaming up with the church to make rules contrary to the Constitution and the Word of God. The result of this unholy alliance? The muzzling of God's preachers. Now, how is Satan accomplishing this plan? By muzzling God's preachers and churches. By muzzling. Oh, here's the average preacher today. Here's, here's Dr. Fido, P-H-I-D-A-U-X. Now, let's, let's just stay here for just a moment. I want you, want you to notice here, Dr. Fido, look at him. He, he's, he's just eaten. He's just filled his stomach. And he's having pleasant dreams. And uh, he's happy. His, stomach's, his stomach is filled. Uh, he's, is, he not a, is he not an example of the average preacher in America? All right, but what does the old prophet say? Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 56, verses 10 and 11, quote, his watchmen are blind. They're all ignorant. They're all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Every one for his gain from his quarter. Yeah, here's the U.S. Catholic Conference, National Council of Churches of Christ, and the Internal Revenue Service. They've all cooperated to control Bible-believing churches. Assess the moral, and what they've done is they've come together to make up rules and, and here's the list of things that churches can do and cannot do at election time, do's and don'ts. Here's the do's and don'ts. We're not going to take time to read them right now, but here at the, the U.S. Catholic Conference, National Council of Churches of Christ, and the Internal Revenue Service has uh, put this out. 
a list of do's and don'ts. Now notice the do list is on the left and the don't list is on the right. And notice how the do list is much smaller than the don't list. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? All right. But notice, my friends, in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, it says that the church is the lampstand. And the church is the light of the world, according to the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the snuffer. 501c3 is the snuffer to put out the church's light. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus. Revelation 2, verse 5. Not for profit religion. The priest said, not, where is the Lord? And they that handle the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after the things that do not profit. Jeremiah 2.8. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Jeremiah 2.11. And yet the churches are stamping right on their envelopes and admitting that they're non-profit organizations. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Are preachers being muzzled? How many preachers say, they're not telling me what to preach? Ira cites Swigert Ministry for mixing religion and politics. Jimmy Swigert said, well, we'll have a compliance committee. Did you know that trustees or official board of the state-controlled church is the compliance committee? The Atlanta Constitution on January the 12th, 1992. Headline, pulpit politics could mean trouble with the IRS. Atlanta Journal, April 2nd, 1992. David Gibbs, Jr., Christian Law Association. There's a new breed of trustees out there who understand their fiduciary obligations. Are preachers being muzzled? Iris warns churches about partisan politicking. Church and State, September 1992. Complaint says church ads broke tax-exempt rules. Atlanta Journal, November 7, 1992. IRS, No Uncontrolled Churches, America Today. U.S. Attorney Robert Metzler. The position of Indianapolis Baptist Temple basically says that it allows no government regulation until it voluntarily submits to it is simply an untenable position in society. U.S. versus IBT. U.S. Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, Oral Arguments, May 11, 2000. But IRS throws America's preachers a bone. IRS Publication 1828, page 7. Individual activity by religious leaders. The political campaign activity prohibition is not intended to restrict free expression on political matters by leaders of churches or religious organizations speaking for themselves as individuals, nor are leaders prohibited from speaking on important matters of public policy. However, for their organizations to remain tax-exempt under IRC Section 501c3, religious leaders cannot make partisan comments in official organization publications or at official church functions. IRS Publication 1828, page 7. Individual activity by religious leaders to avoid potential attribution of their comments outside of church functions and publications Religious leaders who speak or write in their individual capacity are encouraged to clearly indicate that their comments are personal and not intended to represent the views of the organization. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away, 2 Timothy 3.5. 
the return of Nicolaitanism. State clergy rule, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of Nicolaitanism, which I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and fight against thee with the sword of my mouth. Revelation 2, 15 and 16. Martin Luther said, if I defend the whole Christian faith at every point, but don't defend it at the point where it is presently being attacked, then I'm a coward and a traitor. Well, Pastor, are you willing to waive your rights as a preacher of the gospel? The story you are about to hear is also very well documented in the YouTube channel of Dr. Dixon's website, The Trumpet Online, at the web address of youtube.com forward slash The Trumpet Online. When you hear the story, you might exclaim, this can't happen in America. Listen carefully as Dr. Dixon explains the story of Indianapolis Baptist Temple, who did not owe any taxes, and yet the Attorney General under George W. Bush, John Ashcroft, along with the courts, decided that a church that will not succumb to being an IRS-approved church is considered, in America, a terrorist organization. You will see pictures of the church that was worth $6 million before they sold it for $1.5 million, and cartoons matching the TV video on the YouTube site of Dr. Dixon being carried out of the church on a stretcher because he would not leave the prayer vigil being held to keep the property that belonged to the church. They even took Dr. Dixon's home for 40 years that was paid off where they had lived and reared their children and family. Eventually, the church that all the members loved was bulldozed, and all for absolutely no reason except for IRS tyranny. The Christian school that had educated hundreds of young people in Christian principles was made into a charter school. Ladies and gentlemen, this is serious business. Our very lives and freedoms are under attack as never before. Take note of what you are about to see and consider what you could do to save your own church from the same fate. The post-Christian era brings direct attacks by government against the Lord's church. UN targets local churches for eradication, the Christian Elite Alert Network. Secret October 1998 White House meeting held to destroy all uncooperative churches. The five-point plan was uncovered by Tex Mars and reported in the August 2000 Power of Prophecy newsletter. An Indianapolis police officer tells street preachers not to preach in the name of Jesus that arrests four at 500 Festival Parade. What are the results of resisting state tyranny? First, ridicule. Here was a cartoon in the Indianapolis Star. What should I do, Lord? Mockingly, they said, run, run to the IRS. What is the IRS? Because so you can expect ridicule from the world. When they carried me out of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple on February the 14th, 2001, after 100 federal marshals raided our church auditorium, is this President Bush's faith-based initiative? Expect them to ridicule and mock you. You will be labeled anti-government and unpatriotic. U.S. Attorney John Ashcroft implies that the Indianapolis Baptist Temple's buildings were destroyed because they were a terrorist organization at a live media event carried by CNN and Fox News December the 5th, 2001. After they bulldozed our buildings down, then, my friends, expect the confiscation of church assets. Fed sees Baptist Temple Annapolis Star, February the 14th, 2001. This was a beautiful Baptist Temple Auditorium. Six million dollars worth of property. They seized it, sold it for a million and a half. 
took our beautiful Christian school. Now it's a charter school, church building soul for charter school and bulldoze. April 2002. Here's the buildings being bulldozed down, torn down. This is what you can expect if you stand up against the beast. Here's our beautiful church parsonage of where we lived for 37 years and raised our family. What is the conclusion of the matter? Pastors summoned on religious liberty say churches can own nothing. Sharpsburg, Georgia, January 20 through 21, 2003. For a full report, write Dr. Greg Dixon at earthlink.net. Our recommendation, all New Testament churches should either organize or reorganize the following documents. O oh, sleeping church with lofty spire, with regal robes and rich attire, content you sleep and think that beauty ascends to God as love and duty. While brave men strive a vigil keep, thou knowest not that thou art asleep. The great deceiver will devour with added zeal as comes the hour. Born not of darkness but of light, why will thou sleep as if tis night? Oppressions cry from many a brother, should stir your soul to help another. Good shepherds watch, a vigil keep. Blind shepherds lead, still blinder sheep. They follow on in comfort bound. They neither see nor hear the sound of currents swift and swelling tides that quickly come where no one hides. The day of Daniel's truth abounds and knowledge reigns with stifling sounds. While truth and wisdom seek a place Ye bend your vows and mock at grace. Now right is wrong and wrong is right, and ye perceive the day is night. The surface facts are Satan's tool to cause the saint to play the fool. O church, awake, resist, arise. Lift up your heads to eastern skies. Before you wake in chains of fear, as ease and comfort disappear. For you there will surely come a dawn when you hear him say, sleep on, sleep on. For information and paperwork for organizing or reorganizing New Testament Church, please contact Dr. Greg Dixon. Email Dr. Greg Dixon at earthlink.net. That's D-R-G-R-E-G Dixon, D-I-X-O-N, at earthlink.net or call 317-7-TEMPLE or 317-783-6753. You may want to visit the websites shown on the screen. The-trumpet-online.com, Dr. Dixon's online publication with daily automatic email updates. Biblicallawcenter.com, a place for churches to find help with legal issues and organizing as an unregistered church. The Trail of Blood.net, about Dr. Dixon's book, The Trail of Blood Revisited. And YouTube.com forward slash The Trumpet Online. Watch the TV reports of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple crisis and other videos by Dr. Dixon.